Because now you can't even follow. I mean, maybe he's bad. Maybe he's evil. All I know is I have mountainous corruption hanging out in my face, in your face, in our collective face, and nothing's being done about it. So to recap, there was a shooting at WDBJ Television in Virginia. Vester Flanagan was at the affiliate. Twitter account suspended after first-person video of shooting posted. We have played that. We have the graphic full video up on Infowars.com. The cops now say suspect in the murder shot himself is in critical condition. First, they thought he was dead. Uh, but he does supposedly have a light pulse. And uh, he's a guy that worked his way into TV uh, from the bottom, ended up being able to be a reporter. Uh, ended up being able to do it at TV stations across the country, but continually had to leave those stations after he filed EEOC reports and lawsuits. And you know, you look at him ten years ago; he looked like a pretty normal guy and looked like reporter material. Uh, you look at him now; I mean, he looked completely whacked out of his mind. And I am predicting that he was on drugs, just like I took one look at Dylan. Roof, and I said, I bet he's on amnesics. There's probably 30 different classes of psychoactive, psychotropic, slash antipsychotic drugs, probably more than that. How did I just magically say, I bet he was on an amnesic? Because I saw how Sirhan Sirhan looked in photos and film. I've seen how most of these people look, and when they're on an amnesic, you really better look out. And that always points towards it being staged as well. Because people won't remember, and you can tell them, oh, you did the crime. McVeigh was given amnesics in prison. That's why he'd tell people next to his jail, I'm innocent, I'm former special forces, secret operations, which we got all the documents on, we know he was set up. I was infiltrating right-wing groups, I didn't want to be part of the bombing. He told Larry Nichols that, we've had Larry Nichols, uh, the guy from the cell next to him on, from death row. And it's the same story, and then it came out that... Roof was on a very strong amnesia. So I don't know what the truth is in that case. Uh, but regardless, it's mind control because as a culture, you put 20% of 330 million people on drugs that the drug insert says can make you go out and have psychotic breaks. And then you're obsessed with video game shoot 'em ups, which most of the real shooters are. Not blaming video games. I'm saying you put a mentally ill person on drugs, on mind control drugs with shoot 'em up games. This is how you get a whack job par excellence. They all have the same look in their eyes. And the drugs flip a switch in the brain that does it. Very simple. And they may take the drugs for five years and not have a problem. They take too much, take too little, mix something with it, and it's cuckoo land. It's crazy town. I've done methamphetamine twice in high school. You're at a party, good looking girl says, Oh, try it, you'll love it. We can go drive to the beach, you know, you can stay up all night, it's gonna be great. And a day later, I'm at the beach doing bad things. Nothing really horrible, but you know, not being a very nice person. Some of the few things I've done in my life that weren't very and I'll tell you, I put cigarettes out on my hands. We're all sitting there on methamphetamine putting cigarettes out. I have burns from those now when I was like 15 years old. I would never do that. That's what hardcore drugs do, ladies and gentlemen. Did it twice. Twice. There's people that have done it thousands of times. They look like space aliens. I don't care if you're black or white or Hispanic. Walking down the street, I can go, that's a meth head. That's a meth head. That's a meth zombie. And... It is the pharmacological system that's causing this. It's the main cause. Society generation, family unraveling, guns everywhere. That obviously adds to it. But you can't take my guns because there's a bunch of whacked out, drugged out people running around. It comes down to that. That's what hardcore drugs do. And I only share these stories to try to help people. I want to open the phones up on the Charleston situation that ties in to the Virginia situation. 
They're trying to push a race war. This is clearly part of that with highly suggestible people. Obama is coming in with massive executive pushes outside of law where they're just announcing for more than 100 reasons they're going to look at all the Social Security recipients. And if you're paralyzed from the chest down or you do automatic money transfer, you're going to be declared incompetent outside of law. You used to have to have a big court hearing and a trial for that. But they're just going to declare you incompetent. And there's no judge, no jury. They just come and take your guns or you can't buy guns. And it's happening to veterans all over the country. Now what they've done to veterans is going to be moved on to the older folks in America, 65 and up. And, and then it's going to move on to everybody else. This is how tyranny works. It targets certain groups and slices. And he's, he's, he's promising a whole bunch of other initiatives. And, and you can believe it's coming. You can believe it's here. You can believe this is the big push. And I predict there's going to be white people go out and kill black folks. There's going to be black folks killing white people. There's going to be more knockout games. There's going to be more cops getting shot. I mean, every couple of days you hear about a cop getting shot sitting in their patrol car. And in almost every case, it's in a black inner city area, and the person does it because of the Black Lives Matter. Or two dumb white kids come into Detroit to buy crack, and the guy takes them to a field and tortures them to death after he ties them up and says in court, because they're white. And Black Lives Matter, as if it's going to help black people to go out and kill two stupid crackhead white kids. As if those stupid crackheads were doing anything to you but trying to put money in your stupid pocket. But that's how whacked out this is. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. In any emergency, in any crisis, in any type of situation, the number one thing you need is to be prepared. And one of the best ways to do that is with colloidal silver. We have the best colloidal silver already at the lowest price. 30 parts per million made by the top lab in the country, private labeled for us, normally $30 when competitors sell the exact same thing. We have it for $19.95, sometimes it's $24.95. You can get 30% off when you buy one bottle or you can buy two bottles and get two free. This deal will end by Friday because I'm not going to allow it to sell out. It's going to go back to regular price and you won't be able to buy two, get two free on Friday. But I'm going to, again, keep this deal up until Friday, and then I'm going to keep what we have left so we can not sell out until the next group comes in in October. Uh, because it's a problem selling out of stuff, because I offer so many specials. Super Mel Vitality's back in stock. Uh, 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 back in stock is Secret 12, the best vitamin B12 out there, methylcobalamin, pharmacological, pharmaceutical grade. Absolutely amazing. Infowarslife.com or 888-253-3139. Prostagard's back in. Truly organic um, Roman and Mediterranean uh, oil of oregano and a bunch of other great products. Infowarslife.com or 888-253-3139. Drudgereport.com is linked to the video that we've posted. The video is getting pulled down, but we'll have copies of it go up. So they're not able uh, to keep the public from seeing it, where he in first person shoots the woman. And you don't see any blood. Uh, it's really not even that graphic, but it shows how cold-blooded it is. Uh, and I wonder if the media is going to point out that he said he did it because they were racist. And this is basically a Black Lives Matter spillover. I mean, this is what the media is pushing. This is what gets promoted on Twitter. Whites are being dehumanized as these monsters that deserve to die. And then DrudgeReport.com links to Infowars.com where you can see the video for yourself. And again, we're showing this not to be macabre. We're showing it because in the 60s, we saw footage of kids being napalmed in Vietnam. So we have a right to see this. But yes, warning, it is graphic video and we should probably also uh, point out and we do point out in the article that this is being pushed out of the news that he did this saying that she was racist and basically deserved it because they want to make it all about the Second Amendment 
and blame all gun owners, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, old, young, Native American, immigrant, whatever. They want to blame gun owners as if we collectively, it'd be like if somebody ran over their neighbor's foot with a riding lawn mower, and they went on TV and went, you people that have riding lawn mowers, you are all to blame. How do you feel? Somebody killed somebody with a riding lawn mower. Hundreds of people a year get killed when psychos run over them with cars. Do we blame? There was a Toyota truck, a Toyota Tundra, and he ran over his wife with it. How do you truck owners feel, huh? You want to apologize? Want to pay some reparations? No. I am individually responsible for what I do. And the hallmark of a totalitarian society, in every case, is that you're collectively blamed for what individuals do. In Russia, in Nazi Germany, you would be blamed in every case for what your neighbor did so that you could then be pressured to put cultural pressure on people to go along with the party. Oh, if your neighbor got caught doing something anti-Hitler and you didn't know about it, you didn't report it, you're now under suspicion. You might get picked up. You might get arrested. We're going to go to break and we're going to come back and talk to Ben and Buckley and Kavik, Robert, Rob, and many others that are patiently holding. The toll-free number to join us is 800 2599231. We had Steve Quell scheduled today, but I was going to try to move him to another day because he's going to cover a bunch of geopolitical issues. We've been unable to get a hold of him. So I'm not sure what's going to be happening with that. We do have a guest popping in in studio as well. But regardless, I'm going to be taking a lot of your phone calls. So please have your point and your comment ready uh, on this whole situation. While we're busy focused in on this, a lot of other things uh, are happening as well. And, of course, we also need to remember uh, that the economy is in a designed, contrived, engineered meltdown. And that pretty much everything else being promoted uh, and pushed is a distraction from the fact that TPP and these other global government systems are being expanded right in front of us. But there's no doubt the next big launch to come after our guns from executive action outside of law is now coming so brace for that the battle for the republic how long until the news comes out that the virginia shooter was on psychotropic type drugs i think it'll come out in the next two days or they might be successful in suppressing sometimes it comes out in a year uh he's in critical condition they said he was dead at about 10 55 the police had him surrounded reportedly shot himself in the head Bryce Williams was the name of the reporters who reportedly did this after losing his job. Vester Flanagan was his real name, worked at WDBJ. And I've already shown the footage, I'm not going to show it again, of him in first person like a video game going around shooting people, shooting the cameraman, shooting the woman, waiting till the camera pans back to the reporter so it'd be on tape. Uh, trying to get her to turn around so she would see him. And he just has that typical whacked out look in his eye uh, of these type of shooters. And the truth is you can't stop people like this. You will have a small percentage of people that go out and kill people. Every week or so in Japan and China, we hear about, you know, 15 killed, 5 killed, 7 killed by a man with, with a homemade knife or, or man with machete or man with sword. I mean, that's what happens. A whacked out person who's got the will to kill people with a samurai sword, you can go into a room of 15, 20 people and kill them. In fact, a lot of cases, swords per whack can be more deadly than a gun because a gun sometimes the bullet goes in a weird direction. That with a sword, chop an arm right off. A lot of folks will die from that because it's a clean cut. It's one thing if your car gets, you know, your arm gets mangled in a car or something. And then you're bleeding, but it's able to clot up. But a clean cut or get stabbed in the stomach by a big old sword or a big old butcher knife, you're dead. Just as often or more so from the numbers I've seen than with a firearm. Now, if I shoot you with my 500 Smith & Wesson, <laughs> it might be a little bit different. 
Okay, this is a short little no man's land segment. I'm going to come back at the beginning of the next segment and go right to...